Hello, I'm Aztec Michael and I have with me Aztec President John Clevin. John, thanks for joining us. We wanted to talk a little bit about our window tint specifications, in particular how a lot of folks out there might be beating the meter, so to speak, and we wanted to break that down into more simple terms. There's a few different ranges of visible white to UV and infrared that you're gonna see when you're looking at your window film specification. And honestly, any high-end window film nowadays has 99% UV rejection. That means it's gonna protect your skin from any cancerous damage, as well as your interior from fading. Visible light is really up to the preference of the individual. If you want more privacy, less light going through your window, the darker film you get, the less visible light is gonna be shown. So those two numbers, we don't wanna to dive too much further into than that, but there is a pretty cool development around IR, which is, I think, for most folks, the most important number when you're shopping for window tint. IR is the infrared heat energy that you're gonna get from the sunshine that is shining down on the car and usually would make you uncomfortable or sweaty in your car if you don't have any window tint. Now there's different varieties of this number and John will kind of explain how a lot of competitors look at the IR range of uh, these nanometers, if you will, to give you kind of a, a sliver of that result and how that might impact you as the car owner. Yep, great. So IR is really important because not only does it create a lot of heat inside the vehicle, but it's what you actually feel burning on your skin. So if you have your window down and on a hot sunny day and you have one of our high energy rejection films on your car, roll your window up, you're gonna feel immediate uh, release. And that's because IR is what truly is burning on your skin. But let me get into the, the wavelengths, the different spectrums. Uh, so when manufacturing window films, there's lots of different ingredients that can be used. Um, carbon is a very great uh, and popular option because one, it doesn't fade, um, but it does provide some infrared blocking, but it's in the very near range. Um, Tungsten is also commonly used, and that's gonna provide IR blocking in the middle of the infrared uh, nanometer range. And then ITO is gonna be something that's gonna provide great rejection in the far IR range. So ultimately, you'd want a combination of all three of these products uh, because that's gonna give you the ultimate um, protection inside your vehicle. And the title of this story is Beating the Meter, right? So if uh, one measurement is taken at a near IR, for example, and you load a film up with carbon, it's gonna provide a really high IR blocking number. Or if it's gonna be, um, you can put a lot of tungsten and let's say you measure in the middle of the, the range, then it could provide a really high number of blocking, but it doesn't tell the story because the far IR, the film may be falling off. And so all this heat is still getting in in the, in the higher ranges of the, uh, the light spectrum. So that being said, you can make a film that conforms to your meter. So if you have a, a meter that's measuring at 900 nanometers, which would be a close to a near IR rating, um, and you provide tons of blocking in that near range, it doesn't tell the story, but on paper, you may have a film that's blocking 70, 80% of infrared, but it's not a realistic number. Yeah, as, as the car owner, driver, or even passenger, you're gonna feel that whole spectrum of IR. So if you're looking at a window film that is just really tackling that near range or just middle or high, you're not getting that full spectrum of protection. And so what we're getting at here is that some folks, depending on the quality of the meter that you might use, is they're looking where their film is performing best, sharing that number, and that's all they tell you. But we're very excited to have recently joined the International Window Film Association, which is the first company and effort I've seen to standardize how IR is tested. They're introducing a new IRER, which is more of an average percentage of how your film does across the entire IR spectrum. And so for the first time, us, along with a lot of other major manufacturers, are gonna be really telling that full story from the near, middle, and far IR ranges. Now this already benefits us though because we've been telling the whole story the whole time. If you look closely at our specifications charts, you'll see that we have the test result in this range, the near, as well as that far IR range so that you get two IR numbers based on really the whole spectrum. Now this will probably shake things up a little bit and I believe will make Aztec films just that much more competitive when you're looking on paper. There's nothing new in particular for us.
But um, as John was explaining, there are a few different common particles from carbon, tungsten, and ITO. And so as we show you guys really, well, how do we decide then what is a good window film outside of just looking at these numbers? The best way is to go put each of these films in front of a heat lamp like we have here in front of us and then use what I would call a BTU, British Thermal Unit Meter. That is simply measuring the heat energy, the thermal units that are passing through the window film. And so you can get really a better idea of what we're talking about here as we cycle through what is our Action Series, our Smart Series, and our NEX Series. Each of these films will give you more and more rejection because we are adding more of those particles that are covering, again, that near, middle, and far IR range. And the graphene in particular in our NEX allows those ceramic particles to just act that much more efficiently. So it's a lot of technical knowledge, but if you guys have any questions at all, make sure to reach out to your rep or give us a shout across our website. We're always happy to help and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.